Hello everybody, my name is Scatter, welcome back to Divine Journey 2. I'm just here getting the last of the will in the common gem. Uh, I went ahead and replaced the zombie spawner, or the deer spawner that I had here, because this does need to be a hostile creature. Oh, they're actually dropping some will as well that I could be picking up to do this faster, but it's uh, it's full there now anyway, so that's fine. Uh, so I'll go ahead and turn that off. Uh, but yeah, the um, the will, you know, it's pretty fine. You know, you know, it doesn't take too long to fill it up when you do something like that. Uh, especially since I could just hover over them, not take damage, I could knock them around or anything. Pretty straightforward. Uh, it does have to be a hostile mob, which is why I had to switch out the deer one, and that is the same zombie spawner that I've been using to get zombie soul vials, but I shouldn't need that for anything right now, and I can just put that back there if I do. So, uh, there is, it's, it turns out, a way to automate will. Uh, but it's a, it's something that you don't get into until chapter 17. Um, so I think in that way, we're just going to keep pressing on here in terms of automating the alchemy table and the hellfire forge. I think you pretty much need integrated dynamics, uh, to do it. And I have a lovely guide here from somebody in the divine journey to discord. And I'm trying to decide if it's really worth setting up or not, um, because it's pretty complicated. But I mean, on the other hand, you know, what else am I going to do? <laughs> Just keep, you know, babysitting it. Maybe that's fine for now. I'm not sure. But let's uh, let's see here. So uh, we, the first thing we have to do, though, is definitely make the incense altar, I think. So let's go ahead and make another gold crystal and then some more holy cores and then a bunch of this stuff that we've all seen before. So in order to set up this, uh, or in order to make... In order to continue here, I definitely want to get a better setup to make haste reagents. Now, ideally, I mean, this whole thing should probably move uh, if we want to be real about it. But uh, I, I did set it up to be a little bit better. So before I was like putting the haste three into a tank. And then when I was done with everything, putting that back into the uh, the same fractionating still. But I did go ahead and just set up another one since they are pretty damn easy to make for us at this point. So this is going to be haste two in here. Extract that into a liquid. Haste 3 gets produced here, Haste 4 gets produced here, and we can put that out into a tank and pick it up with the bottles. So the only thing that's left to do now is replace this out for an advanced item filter. We say Haste 4, and we definitely want to match on NBT and metadata and disable our dictionary and all that good stuff. So that should now for sure only suck out the proper stuff. And as we can see, it is doing it pretty well. So we should get one 50 millibuckets if everything goes well, and it looks like it will, out into the tank. So I should now be able to load this up with some more um, bottles. That's the word. And as a matter of fact, for now, let, let me just, well, that's not quite what I wanted to do there, but you know what? It works. There we go. Yeah, so they're not getting pulled out. They are getting pulled out. Are you kidding me? Are you actually kidding me? So there's just no way to filter on this. Ignore match. Maybe maybe that's saying this is now now it's matching and it was disabled before. Okay, interesting. Um, I mean, I get it. That's fine. Always with buttons like that, you know, when there's a toggle. Sometimes, and it's way too common, but just people don't understand how UX works, you know, and they, they'll just have it be not super clear. So it looks like now, finally, this is actually what we want to happen in here. So these are going to get turned into awkward potions and then et cetera, et cetera. And now, as long as we fill that up with enough stuff and actually the unending bowl over here i'm just going to connect up to here so i don't have to keep filling it up with water and then that should actually give us as much haste potion as we want <sighs> okay this is finally i think a fully i mean other than the ingredients here but i don't really care about that to be honest like i had so much trouble because it seemed like there were two different like types i think it's fine now though it's fine now so if i just have this import straight to the ME system and there we go so that's going to import our haste fours and there's a bunch that I've made so far so 
Yeah, there's no way to pick up uh, potion fluid in a bottle other than a fluid transposer, which is a little bit annoying, but that's fine. Um, so I'll just get as much as I want here, and that should be plenty, I think, for the time being. Um, let's just see how many we have now. 20, I mean 20 and counting. It's going to be fine. It is going to be totally, totally fine, especially for our purposes. So, right. Let's make the incense altar. You know what? No. It's, this is worth... It's worth it to make this stuff automated, I think. Fully autonomously, completely no intervention needed, uh, just automate it all. I think it's definitely worth it. So let me try and get my head around it, what's happening here, and then we'll get it set up. All right, we're going to get this whole thing set up with integrated dynamics, okay? So bear with me. It's going to be a little bit complicated. I think I understand what's going on here. So First of all, we're going to put down our variable store, and that's going to definitely not be connected there. But that's going to be like, you know what? No, I'm going to put this on the other side because there's a bit more room. And I think that uh, room is always good. So we're going to throw this down over here. So there's our variable store, and that's going to be a lot of the brains of this operation. So first of all, inventory reader on the side that's going to tell us everything about what's in here the purposes of this are going to be so you don't put items in the slots when there's already an item there that's ultimately the main problem right because that means first of all it's not going to try and like stack up items and then it gets more in and then it says like oh i'm going to put those in the other slots but then also issues like you know the pyrothium dust for the one of the fire things that's uh you know it needs to go one in this slot one in this slot it's not going to have that problem. It's only going to put items into empty slots, right? So here is how we do that. Okay, step zero is to connect up the inventory reader to the variable store so that you can actually access its UI here. Uh, now we have to attach a variable card here for the items of the thing. So now this variable card is going to be a list of all the items in all of the slots in this system. Now, I thought there was a way to rename them because that's gonna make this whole thing a lot easier, but maybe not gonna be necessary. Uh, so now we need a few different operators, okay? So list get, right? So this is operator, list get, okay? And then we want operator item size. Okay. And now we want an integer of zero. So this just represents zero always. And then we want operator relational equals. Okay. So another operator, so that's gonna work on two different variables. Uh, we want equals zero by applying So that's going to be an operator and then anything. So we apply zero to equals, right? So we made a zero and then we apply equals, right? Relational equals. Okay. So then this means equals zero, right? I could have sworn you could like click here to change the names of these things. This is going to, uh, no, I need to name these. This is going to get too insane. Okay, so quick Google, and I do remember this now, you need to make a labeler, and you need to have that in your inventory in order to unlock being able to rename these things. A little bit convoluted in my opinion, but it's okay. So now we can go ahead and, uh, well, I'm actually just going to get rid of this applied operator, and then we can just do it again. So we're going to apply and apply two and three. They're just for different numbers of parameters, right? So apply, we're applying zero to our relational equals, right? Which is over here. And then we can rename that equals zero, right? And then put that there. So now this equals zero, right? Okay. So then this is an operator that says does the thing that we pass into it equals zero, right? Next, we want to apply the slot contents, which I already have on me, right? Apply, so slot contents to get 
list get, right? So that works because this applies to a list, right? And it gives us an, no, it gives us a list of integers, I think. And then, so we're getting a slot, a specific slot, right? Get slot. And then we're piping, we're getting this dot size, right? So we have an item size operator. This is just two operators. So it's this, it's the, the slot, get slot dot size, right? Okay. Slot size. Okay, so that'll tell us the size of a slot. And then this one is pretty straightforward, I think. So slot size dot equals zero is going to tell us whether the slot is empty, right? Okay, is this making sense so far? So now we have an operator here that tells us whether the particular slot in the alchemy table is empty. Okay, that, that makes sense to me. So now we need a list of the slots to check. This is going to be a list of integers and the slots are going to be zero, one, two, three, four, and five. So this is going to be valid slots. Those are just the numbers that internally represent the inputs of the alchemy table. And then we want to filter that list of valid slots using, that's the operator slot. We want to filter that using is slot empty. So that's going to apply the is slot empty to all of our slots. Okay. So then that's just going to return us the empty slots. Okay. So this is a list of all the empty slots. And now we have to tell it only to output to those slots. Okay. At this point, it's getting a little bit arcane for me. Uh, so I'm just going to follow the instructions kind of blindly, but I'll see if I can explain what's happening. So this is no export and it's a value negative two. So that's just always negative two, but it represents that we're not exporting. And then we're creating export slot using get or default, right? So we're going to say the list of slots. So that's going to be our empty slots, empty slots. There we go. So that's the list that we're getting from. So we're getting zero. So there's our zero and there's no export. Okay. So that's export slot. And then we want to put that in the export item slot portion of the item explorer, exporter rather, and the rest in a variable store. Okay. So the other thing, only other thing that we need to do here is get a chest set up to be kind of the intermediary here. We may be able to do that without, we may be able to just take straight from the ME interface. Actually, you know what? Yeah, let's try that uh, because that should be able to work. It says we want to set this to blocking mode. So do not push crafting items if inventory contains items, uh, which makes some sense. But then again, well, assuming it's going to push them all at the same time, which makes sense. Um, but no, you know what? No, I am going to set up a chest as an intermediary here because I think it may need it. And if it doesn't need it, it's at least going to make it work a little better. I think this is not my forte, but I think this is how it's going to go. So there we go. And we definitely don't want to put our outputs into here, right? So disconnect that. So now this is on blocking mode. It's going to push into that chest. This chest is going to export to the crafting table. This is going to need an item interface on there in order to interface with it. So let me just whip one of those up really quick. Item interface. There we go. 
and throw you down there. And now, make sure everything is all connected. In the item exporter, we want to set the item transfer rate to one. And we're exporting to a particular slot, so we want to definitely set the item transfer rate to one. And then what we put in here is the export slot because that is telling it which slot that we want to go to. And where was that? Where was that? Where was that? Where was that? Export slot. Export item slot. So it's it's throwing errors because it can't find the variables because I haven't put them in here yet. But now it should have everything it needs. Now are you happy? Yes. Okay. Incredible. So this should now be actually automated. I mean, well, it's not because of this dumb reason, but... As soon as I get this. Now, Uli, now remember the sidedness is such that it'll only pull output outputs from the bottom. So this should be working fine now. So let's go ahead and see if we can automate one of these harder ones. So pyrothium dust, it needs two for incendium. So let's make that and let's just see if it does Okay, so it it's making some stuff there. Now, right now, it's just not pulling anything. Okay, so that's bad. And I do not have the know-how to troubleshoot this, unfortunately, but uh, I'll try. All right, let's do some debugging. I won't show too much of this because I think it's maybe a little bit boring, but let's just see. First of all, let's just check the end first. So this is export item slot it's showing slot zero. So that should be working, I think, right? So it's saying you want to export to zero. So why can't you? Why aren't you exporting to zero right now? Um, like this is all on and working, right? That's fine. If I show, if I get empty slots, where's your list of empty slots here? Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Well, that is correct. And it's correctly showing that they're all empty and it wants to export to zero. So Okay, this is, I'm sure I can figure this out, but just give me a moment. Okay, seems like I simply had the things the wrong way around. Um, exporter, you know, it's like, you would think that goes on the, you know, whatever, but it doesn't, so I was, it was just a slight misunderstanding, so that's fine. So now if I put this in here, now you're trying to pull things in here the right way. There we go, and now, See, now there's an issue. Now, is that just simply because it forgot the item transfer rate? I think it is because of that. So now, that I see no reason at all why that should not be that way. Now I'll get this to pull out buckets. So now I'll just set a filter on you to pull out buckets. I think buckets are the only thing I'm going to have to worry about. Although perhaps not. Um, now I need filter. Now maybe there's a way to get this set up here too with integrated dynamics, but I think that's over solving a problem. Uh, I think this would work just fine for pulling out stuff like the buckets and then you don't have to worry about it. So turn you on and then there we go. So now let's try that again make sure that everything works. So incendium, one more. Perfect, oh my God. Okay, well that's the alchemy table fully automated. As far as I know, I mean, I don't see why it should go any differently now, but that is a fully automated alchemy table. We're 20 minutes in, uh, but I mean, that's like, that's like three episodes worth of progress in terms of like, time saved. I don't even know if that makes any sense to say, but you know what? Count it. I, that, I'm just so insanely happy with that now. Wow. So this same principle, of course, can be used for the Hellfire Forge, which I just finished setting up, and uh, I just finished understanding uh, <laughs> this this entire thing. I, I, I finally understand the entire chain here. So the getter default, what this is doing is we have a list of the empty slots out of the valid slots, which are, of course, the input slots. So in the alchemy table, it's the first six. In the Hellfire Forge, it's the first four. Um, and what this is doing is saying, get the first value in the list 
which is here zero because you know it's zero computer start counting from zero so you're getting index number zero you're getting the first thing in that list if the list is empty it's going to return this negative two instead which is saying don't export there is no negative two slot so it's going to do nothing and that is going to do it for the hellfire forge automation as well so this just has to be set up for our transfer rate to be one of course because if we put in a stack at a time then it's just going to have the same problem and export i did do that with export slot right i did and that is going to be uh export slot where did i put that where did i put that export slot there we go and it's missing the variables and now it should no longer be missing the variables so there we go now the hellfire forge should be completely automated as well so i'll go ahead and throw the common gem in there uh, i have it exporting here i use it using the same filter as before um, it's taking buckets out just like before um, and then it's just it's putting them into the other interface but that really doesn't matter it just needs to get into the a2 system somehow uh, this just needs blocking mode on and then that should be perfect our blood magic stuff should be fully automated and we haven't even done anything else this episode really so let's put it to good use here and go ahead and make our incense altar so two holy cores uh i forget if there's anything here that isn't automatable haste reagent it doesn't know how to make haste reagent um so i can just teach it that should have no issue now of course it doesn't know how to make the haste potions but that's okay it doesn't have to because i can just make enough and throw those in there uh this is next to this magma crucible but this slot is turned off it's a little bit you know dangerous but it should be fine. Actually, I don't even know why this Magma Crucible is here. It's not really doing anything. I will just take it out. It probably did something at some point, but no longer. So now, holy core it up. Um, it just doesn't have our apprentice orb, which is a little bit sad because it means that I'm going to have to either make another one or... Yeah, because the Holy Court needs to be at least the Apprentice one, I believe. Yeah. And probably the same deal to make the Reagents. Is it going to be worth it to make another one of these? You know what? You know what? Yeah, these aren't too bad to make at all. I'm just going to make another one. One to use for crafting and one to use in the Alchemy table. I think that was a pretty good use of time and resources. And for once, I'm not even being sarcastic. So as long as I'm here at the Blood Altar, I'll go ahead and recharge this with LP. I can't actually check how much LP I have until we get into the Divination Signal. Uh, sigil, rather. Uh, this is actually coming pretty soon in the quest line here. Um, Engineer's Goggles. Oh, because that's, oh yeah, that's the secondary. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Those seem pretty easy to make. Uh, but yeah, we'll probably get into that possibly next episode, possibly this one um hard to say right now but i'm not sure where my priorities lie now that i have the automation set up that i wanted to get set up so i'll just let this fill all the way up and stick it in the system and then we can do our crazy insane auto crafts all right we're full up on life essence now based how long on how long it took i think it was a well needed refueling so glad that's done glad that we have a full altar once again and so we can throw, and as a reminder, each of these orbs is just linked to me as a player. They're not linked to sort of the LP themselves. So that one is also full now because it's linked to me and I'm full. I'm full of LP. I'm full of happiness that all this automation work is done. And I'm sure that I will have to, uh, you know, tweak it. Maybe. Well, who knows? I don't know. In any case should be able to go ahead and make my two holy cores which is going to be what i need here everything there is automatable how are we looking we are looking so good wow oh wow i i just it's it's i'm like crying i'm i literally have tears in my eyes i'm not even joking this is just watching this happen and just go off without a hitch full credit to let me look up this guy's name because they're a complete lifesaver uh vr in the discord v-e-e-a-r-r -R. um it's wonderful 
wonderful little guide there and uh, super easy to follow and just it's such a such an incredible product that you get out of it with all that automation just completely foolproof really I just can't believe that that is working as well as it is. Uh, okay, so just need another Cinesite furnace, which means we need another rack furnace. There we go. And a couple of enhanced ender alloys, which I have, and then just another gold promise acceptor, which is just going to be one of these, back in the blood infuser. Still running a little bit low on gold, but like I said, we're working towards, slowly but surely, the section of the mod where we can actually automate that a little bit better than this. But, I mean, I'm leaving this connected right now because why not? But I, I doubt they're doing a whole lot for us. So, there we go with the incense altar. So the incense altar, you place it on a 3x3 three three square. It has 20 tranquility, 20% 20 bonus to the value of blood sacrifice when nearby. Sacrificial dagger will become enhanced when this is active and will take 90% of your health. It has a cooldown of 20 seconds. Okay, so basically it just kind of makes that better, which is cool. Um, for some reason, I thought that it would be sort of necessary to move on here. Maybe it is. No, no way. This is just optional stuff. So that, that was completely optional. Um, that's fine. So that requires this. How do we make the frozen blood core at this point? We need some icy cores. Well, all of this we can automate, surely, right? I don't know if the machine need, knows how to make any of this stuff. Possibly frost. It does know how to make frost reagents. Uh, it definitely doesn't know how to make uh, crystallos, right? Actually, packed ice is something that I have, like, none of in the system. So uh, I have a glacial precipitator somewhere. Glacial precipitator. I'm just going ahead and uh, going to hook that up up here next to the other stuff that just kind of creates something from nothing. I guess, well, no, because this one needs water. So I will set that up closer to that uh, unending bowl that I have down here. So is there anywhere where I can put this that's going to be uh, easy? You know what? Not really. Well, I guess I could put it... Yeah, if I put it here... That's fine. That works. It's ugly, but it works. Like me. Uh, so there we go. You're going to get water in. You are going to get water in. And you're going to make packed ice. Sure. And then you can import to the system. And I just need a packed ice void drawer. I had one left. We'll just go ahead and put that in a void drawer. I set up all these to be void drawers. This is regular ice. We'll put packed ice right there. And because packed ice is kind of a pain to make, right? If you're not using a machine like this. Import bus. And some cables. And then this. You know what? We'll do it. We'll do it that way. You know what? No, that doesn't make any sense. I don't know what I was thinking with that one. Okay, well, so let that come online, and that should start sucking you up. Why are you full? You just need to be... You should You should probably be a dense cable going all the way back. Uh, but you know what? No. Rather than doing that, I will just do this, and then it connects through these interfaces. So this is kind of a mess, especially considering the missing spawner. That's totally okay. So that's going to come online. I'm very confident of it. In just a second now. There we go. Now it's going to start sucking up the snowballs as soon as I do that. So maybe that was the problem the whole time. I doubt it, though. In any case, there's going to be your packed ice. I wonder if that takes more power. 1600 RF. Probably does, right? 1600, 800. Same power as regular ice. So not too bad at all. A little bit slow, but that can be slow. That one's allowed to be slow. That's totally fine. Um, does the machine know how to make aquasolus? It does. 
and it looks like everything there is totally auto craftable and fine. And then you just need to know how to make your upgraded Crystallos, right? So you know how to make snow. You need you don't need to know how to make packed ice. You just need one more bit of snow. And there we go. And I need to throw you over in the alchemy table machine. And I need a pattern card. But okay. Yeah, it's a bit... I don't like the Hellfire Forge automation. I'm not like fully on board with it solely because I still need the filter here. Now what I could do pretty easily is set up another uh, like tiny ID network just to pull from this middle slot. But, you know, this works for now. When I need to autocraft something that isn't one of these and I can't just add it, then maybe... And I mean, like, you know... It works to pull out the buckets too, so you can't really complain. Um, it's only weird when you have to like auto craft the gems, maybe, because then it's going to be pulling out the gems. But I'm probably not going to be auto crafting the same one that I'm using, the same like tier. So who knows, really? Now, uh, what is the name of this and what is it for? So this is Crystallos and it's used for the icy core, right? Of course. So let's go all the way then and teach you how to make the icy core. And then you definitely want to use, wait, do I need to upgrade my orb first? No, no, thank God. I think this is sort of on the way to upgrading your orb. So that would have been impossible. Could be wrong about that though. You can make your icy orb frozen blood core. So you're gonna need four and some undead logs. You should be good with that. Just need a few iron clumps, which again, I can just stick over here. Still need a better setup for this. This one is running off the heavy water still, which is pretty funny, <laughs> but really inefficient because heavy water takes forever. If I was just pumping regular water, uh, the oxygen would be a lot faster. But because I don't need them in like really bulk yet, uh, not a priority for me. I'm definitely glad that I got the uh, blood magic stuff properly automated first. But let's just go ahead and throw those iron clumps in. And now I should be able to make these icy cores. There we go. Now it might be a while before we get stuff going in here other than the catalysts, I guess. Because I think there's some other stuff it needs to auto craft too. But I mean, just... Look how wonderful that is. It's just so good. And then if this runs out, you know, we just go refill it. There is a way to automate will. It's in the Batania chapter, so we're going to be making it towards there pretty soon anyway. But yeah, I just... Uh, integrated Dynamics, like this episode should prove like just how powerful Integrated Dynamics is as a mod in general. Like it's just so insanely powerful, you know, like if you know how to work it if you know it's like ins and outs and like if you're if you're like into like you know programming software stuff it's very similar like the the interface like doing it through minecraft is obviously a lot harder than just like typing code but like i think if you have the brain for it by which i mean like if you are experienced with it because you know i believe anyone can learn anything they want to but um you know, if you're already experienced with it, you're going to have a pretty easy time, I think, grasping the core concepts of integrated dynamics. And if you play around with it long enough, then you're going to know how to uh, really get it, uh, the most potential out of it. Uh, on the other hand, if you don't want to bother doing that, which is totally fair, um, then you can just rely on people uh, who write nice guides. And then you can uh, just copy their stuff and reap all the rewards yourself for absolutely none of the work but anyway Wait, how are you out of water oh okay i don't know how that happened but sure um <laughs> anyway let's uh let's let that finish up let's make the frozen blood core and then i think whatever needs to be done with that i guess this is just how you make your uh tier three yeah Okay, well, we'll uh, let that go ahead and finish up. And then next time, we will uh, 
go ahead and make use of that. We're going to have to upgrade the uh, the Blood Altar tier again as well to make that, which is pretty exciting. Pretty exciting stuff. But I mean, I just can't, I can't overstate how happy I am with the progress here with automating the, uh, the blood magic stuff. I know that's like the eighth time I've said it, but I'm just so impressed with how it worked. I spent like two episodes being like, oh, this is so awful. I don't know how I'm going to ever deal with this. I don't know how I'm ever going to like get this truly automated. Uh, and then in 30 short minutes, it just works. <laughs> it just works, folks. And that is sort of the magic of the whole thing. So, just one more left. Should be just another second now. Two more of those. Okay, I was a little bit worried because it was on two for a while, but I think that just does take a little while to craft. And there is the frozen blood core. Cool. Okay, get some undead, 13 undead planks. All right. So, that's pretty cool. So, we have, we have a pretty set... Uh, progression for next time i think we have to upgrade the blood altar and then we have to push through the rest of chapter 15 possibly even finishing it i don't know how long the rest of it is really uh, i don't know how much in terms of like effort we have left to go but this auto crafting stuff is going to make it fly by i'm sure uh, but in any case um if you made it this far thank you very much for watching and i hope to see you on the next one bye